same size of particles as possible, is it desirable to get all at the same size? Or do we need the boulders and the fines? What would you say? Uh, so I would argue that uh, it's great if you can isolate all of the coffee grinds to the one size and you get a really, really even extraction, but it's very, very wasteful. Um, it, you end up wasting a lot of the coffee if you try to isolate a single grind size uh, because no grinder can produce a single grind size for you. Um, what we're beginning to believe is that the most important portion of the coffee grinds is the smallest ones because that's the majority of the surface area that the water sees. So, um, especially if you're brewing at home, sometimes the best thing that you can do for the quality of your grind size is to get a small sieve or a kitchen sieve or a tea strainer and remove the largest particles from the grinds and keep all of the small stuff. And that will reduce the difference between your largest and your smallest particles and make your grind size much more even. So that's not what I was recommending anyone does when I did the Brewer's Cup a couple of years ago. Uh, things change, sorry. So really standard recipe. Uh, I'm gonna run you through my uh, my recipe and my technique. So we're gonna start off with the good coffee or the good brew, and then after that we're gonna do, and then we're gonna do the uh, the bad brew after that. Feel free to uh, gather in if you want to have a look inside the cone. I'm sorry it's not lower. So, a couple of screws. Here are. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Mm. So, so, the first thing, first thing that I'm going to do is uh, wet the coffee. So, it, I'm using 22 grams of coffee, so I'm going to double that and use 44 to 50 grams of water for my balloon. So that's the first bit of water that you apply to the coffee. The only thing that you need to get right here is stirring the heck out of all of that coffee and water so that all of the coffee grinds get wet straight away. You have 10 seconds, pretty much, from when you apply water until all of the coffee grinds should be wet. Any longer than that, and some grinds won't be extracting for 15, 20, 30 seconds while other grinds are. And that increases your unevenness. So, I'm gonna pour in 40 grams of water, and I'm gonna stir it, and so really aggressively, and that's 10 seconds. So that's how long it should take you between adding water and stirring everything really aggressively. Any longer than that, and unevenness becomes really noticeable. Normally I do that at a Japanese or Korean trade shows and about half the audience leaves because they think that I'm crazy. Uh, but none of you left, so that's really nice. So now I'm just going to pour uh, and let the water drop vertically um, with a fair bit of speed. Um, that's just to agitate all of the grinds, make sure they're all getting mixed in and wet. And you'll notice that I'm also pouring around the edges of the paper. That's washing the coffee grinds back down into the bed of the slurry. So just making sure I'm hitting all of that coffee all the time. And that's why you circulate the pour over. Yeah, just to make sure that none of the coffee grinds are missing out. And then right before I finish, I'll just wash down those grinds again around the edges, and we're good. So some people are really scared of uh, pouring water onto the paper on the edges. Uh, it's clogged up just like the paper is down the bottom. You're, you're not just pouring water down the edge. There is The water is sitting there, it's traveling through the coffee. It's all extracted, so don't worry about pouring at the edges. There's nothing really wrong going on. Uh, so then once that's done, I'm just gonna quickly tap 
the pour over cone, give it a wobble, and that's going to settle the coffee grinds and flatten them. So with a flat bed, all of the water is going to pass through all of the coffee and exit through all of the coffee at exactly the same time. So that all of the grinds have been wet for the same amount of time. In this next pour over, not all of the grinds are going to be wet for the same amount of time. So there's a few things that you should look out for when I do this second pour over. Um, I'm going to add my bloom water and then I'm not going to stir it. So that's going to leave some coffee dry. Now the best way to tell if you've left some dry coffee grounds after your bloom is when you add more water, you'll notice that bubbles come up. If you see bubbles from that second pour of water, you didn't stir well enough because that hot water is finding some dry ground somewhere and they're releasing CO2. So it's a really nice visual indicator that tells you if your stirring technique sucks or if you're doing a good job. So not a single bubble and you're doing really, really great. So let's start the second pour over. Reckon there's enough water in there. Okay. So I'm gonna do the classic Japanese pour a little bit of water in the center because uh, it looks really pretty and it looks great on YouTube videos. Uh, and then I'm going to let that sit for the bloom and then I'm going to add more water after that. So I'm going to try and emulate a very, very similar recipe to this, except with pour technique. And we'll see how we go. And can you say a little bit about the water, the temperature of the water? What should we aim for? I, I almost invariably aim for boiling. Uh, so a lot of people think that if you... Is this a different paper than yesterday? Oh, it's much slower. We're going to drink this one. Interesting. Well, let's see how we go. Uh, I love using boiling, boiling, rolling, boiling water for a few reasons. One is it's quicker. Instead of waiting for a kettle to reach 94 degrees or 96 degrees, it's just boiling. Uh, you don't need a thermometer. You can look at it because you can see boiling water. You can't see if water is... You can't see the difference between 60 and 94, but you can see the difference between 97 and 100. So boiling is really easy to figure out. It's also really consistent. Boiling water is always 100 degrees, and if you're always using boiling water, then you know that your brewing water is always the same. Very, very simple. Also, if your water in your kettle is at 100, by the time you pour it out, it's at 98. By the time it hits the coffee, it's at 94. By the time it mixes with the coffee, it's at 90. And then after a couple of seconds, it's at 88. So it's losing energy very, very rapidly. So 100 degree water actually isn't 100 degree water. 100 degree water in the kettle equals brewing at 88. Um, and if that worries you that using boiling water will burn the coffee, coffee was roasted to 210 degrees Celsius usually. So 100 degree water is like a lukewarm bath compared to what happened in the roaster. So it's not going to burn it. There's nothing that can be burnt in the coffee after it goes through the roaster. So we're going to get this second pour over going with the timer. I'm just going to do the, the classic pour in the middle. There we go. And let that bloom for 30 seconds. This pour over is taking a long time. The papers have a little tab on them, these two. Yeah, they do. Oh, they do. It's the same. Hmm. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to do the classic pour in the middle technique, where you just let the water drop down the middle. Very popular pour over technique. So the idea with this technique is that uh, you push the coffee towards the paper all around the edges and that means that whenever the water is exiting through the paper it's going through coffee first um, which is I, I guess it's uh, it sounds reasonable but what you end up with is coffee sitting on the edges and the water just passing through the middle rather than going through the coffee because there's no real reason why the coffee why the water will want to travel through coffee sideways and then exit through the paper because gravity is not sending it that way. Gravity is sending water down, so it'll go down through the middle. So 
So I'm trying to hit pretty much exactly the same recipe. Three hundred and fifty grams. Now, if you have a look at the bed of coffee in the first pour over, it is flat as a tack. So as the water, as the water left that pour over, it was travelling through every single coffee grind at the same time, pretty much the same as a tamped uh, basket of coffee in an espresso machine. You really want it to be flat so that the water can travel through. So I might need to dilute. dilute this coffee so that it's sitting closer to this one, so that it's a more fair test. Alright, All right. so this second coffee, I didn't tap it, I didn't saddle it, I didn't pour water down the edges. You see that there's coffee all the way up. So that's what is called high and dry grounds. So when the water level was dropping through that coffee, as it dropped below some of those coffee grinds, they stopped extracting. They're not happening anymore. Um, they're just sitting up there, not contributing to the extraction. So, more uneven. Uh, the fact that I didn't stir that coffee means that some of the coffee grinds didn't begin extracting until 30 or 40 seconds in. So, that's getting close to 25% of the total brew time, uh, which is a long time. 25% less contact time with water, whereas all of the coffee grinds in this brew were in contact with the water all of the time. So very, very different styles. So I'm just going to make sure that this is a good example before I tell you all to taste it. Yeah, all right. So on your left, Is a more even pouring technique. And on your right is an uneven pouring technique. And it's totally fine if you prefer the one on the right. It just means your job making pour overs becomes much easier than mine. So uh, please rinse your spoons if you're taking a couple of sips. I'll have a little taste as well. 